good. Just grab a seat there, Mike. Yeah. Uh, it should be in about two seconds. Number two. Yep. Oh, wait there. Let's have a look. Is it picking up? There we go. Try that. Hello. There, there we, we go. go. We Thank got there in the so end. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's oh, what a crowd here. I didn't know this was going to be such a scene. Honestly, there's a lot of Batman. Look, you literally look around here and look at all of the Batman. Yeah, but look at there's a Superman over there. <laughs> Get him! Do you bleed? <laughs> he says yes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Been so excited, because who's a big fan of Batman animated? Oh! Well, you know what? Wasn't that an amazing show? I mean, the quality of the artwork and the stories and the, the casting and the direction and the full symphony score, the Shirley Walker music. I mean, I don't know if you guys realize that they literally doubled what had been spent previously on a half hour of animation for our show. They doubled the budget. Wow. And it shows. It's why 27 years later, when you see them, they still look so new, you know? They're still so exciting to watch. See, I used to watch them. Does anyone else used to watch them on Sunday mornings on TV? And I think it was on ITV as well. They were amazing to watch. But you know what? If we've got any fan questions, is there any fan questions? Because I want to go straight into the fan question, give you guys an opportunity to ask Kevin, so I'm going to jump out. Let's have a look. Gentlemen here. Hi. Uh, I've, I've loved Batman Animated Series when I was a kid. Thank you. I started to understand it when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And I was always curious. The themes in it were really dark. I mean, there were things like, um, we realized that the Joker in Har or rather Harley was in an abuse relationship with the Joker. There's been stuff like, going farther to Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, stabs Bruce in the knee. I always wondered, when you were in the ADR booth, were there ever times where you read the script and were like, this is a kid's show, right? <laughs> well, that's an interesting point. Because originally, the show, you may not realize this here, it was originally in the States, uh, done on uh, a prime time show. It was an evening show. It was not done as a daytime show. So, the original projected audience was really adult, but they knew that they would have a, kid, a kid's component to the show. So they couldn't do things that were overtly violent, like you couldn't endanger people's lives. If you ever notice, Batman never kills anybody. He locks them up in Arkham, you know? Um, they, they, they knew they'd have a very broad age group for that show. But the writing and the, and the acting were very much geared towards adults. Uh, we never talked down to the audience. Um, the performances I gave, I put as much passion into them and I felt honesty into them as I would for something I was doing on stage. Uh, and Andrea Romano, who's a wonderful casting director, probably the best in LA, she did Tiny Toons and, you know, Pinky and the Brain and Animaniacs. I mean, she did all the big shows. She did all of our casting. And she had a real, real talent for finding wonderful stage actors to bring in. Uh, you know, people really who respected the material. Um, no one the, of the writers and the director and the producers and the actors, there was never a sense of, talking down to the audience or talking down to the material. It was always about, there was always a real sense of pride about what we were doing and, um, and a, about a pride in craft, you know? Actors would say, oh, let me do it again, let me do it again. I can give you a better one. Um, which, is, which is wonderful to see people, you know, push themselves that way. So th that's why all of us were so proud to be a part of it. Okay, I'm just hiding to your right there. Uh, we've got a question from Lego Batman, if you can spot him. Okay, Lego Batman, let's hear it. Hi, big fan. Thank um, you. Was you ever considered for the role of Lego Batman? <laughs> no, I didn't even know. The thing about it is, they have an amazing way of keeping things quiet if they're not if they're talking to other people. Uh, I didn't even know it existed until it was released. I didn't even know it had been recorded and built. 
Um, but they, kept, they, were, they keep me busy with other stuff. But when they have a different actor in mind for another project, there's, there's an amazing way of keeping the people they don't want insulated from it. So I didn't even know it existed until it was marketed. Do you have any other fan questions? Oh, right, the front here. Hi there. Hi. Um, so I'm a really big fan of the original series. Would, oh God. <laughs> Would you actually want to do like a reboot to have new episodes of the old series with you voicing it again? Oh gosh, yeah, I'd love to. They didn't stop making the shows because the um, the audience wasn't there, or the actors weren't there. They stopped really because the the creators um, ran out of ideas for stories, and they didn't want to they didn't want to compromise on the quality of what they'd had and start creating kind of silly stories. So they thought, look, we got to go in a whole new different direction. So then they went to Batman and Robin. They brought in Robin. That was the next series. Then they went into uh, Batman Beyond, you know, recruiting a young guy. And then it was the Justice League. They were always looking at different ways to, to reimagine the characters um, just so they could get new storylines. A lot of it had to do with trying to come up with stories that, that weren't becoming ridiculous. But no, all the actors would love to have done more, more of them. You could get all those actors back today in a booth to do more animated series shows because everyone loved it that much. Yeah, let's do it, right. I'd love to see it back, wouldn't you guys? Yeah. yeah. Right, we have our next question here. Who do you think was the best live action Batman? Michael Keaton, Christian Bale, or Ben Affleck? No, 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 no. I knew he wasn't going to answer that. I'm not going there. I'm Ima not going imagine there. if they all end up in a room together. Yeah. You said Christian was better. Yeah, you yeah. said Ben. You know, a, a big, ba oh my God, a battle royale of Batmans. I thought, it, but, but on that topic though, I thought it was crazy when I heard that Warner Brothers wasn't going to give the franchise to one actor. I mean, and traditionally, you know, like Tobey Maguire doing Spider-Man. There was, there was one person doing a character, and they would build the franchise around that actor. When they heard they were going to have different actors in each Batman movie, I thought, that's nuts. They'll have to start the marketing again for each one. But then when I saw how differently each actor portrayed it, I thought, you know, this is kind of genius, because they're all Batman, but they're all such a different take on him, you know? Some are better at Bruce Wayne, some are better at Batman, some are better at combining the two, you know? Um, so I thought that was really an interesting idea. And the same with the voice. I mean, I established a voice that I thought worked for me, but then when I hear other actors doing a voice in an animated thing, I think, well, that's interesting, it's a different take. Like, Mark Hamill, to me, is the Joker. He's the Joker, he's the Joker. There's no question, he's the Joker. Um, but then I saw Heath Ledger, and he was insanely wonderful, but he was different. It was just a different kind of crazy. It wasn't better than Mark. Mark is the Joker, but Heath Ledger was another kind of crazy that I just thought was fantastic. So it's, it's, I, I don't think it's fair to, to compare is what I'm saying. Um, I hate comparing actors. Yeah. Okay, we're still on your right here, another question. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Um, I, I wondered what your opinion was regarding this whole situation with Ben Affleck and the, the Batman films and whether or not he's going to carry on doing them and just generally what your opinions are of his interpretation of the character. I know you don't want to... You have your own... You yeah. Know, you have your take on it and other actors have their take on it, but... Well, the one thing I will say about that, and I'm not going to get into judge, you know, commenting on actors' performances, but... The one thing I will say about that is, I don't know if you're aware, you probably are, there was a lot of, in the Twitterverse and on the internet, there was a lot of criticism when he got cast, saying, oh my God, he's gonna be terrible, he's gonna be terrible. And I was telling people, wait a minute, give this guy a chance. He's a good actor, let's see what he does with it, you know? 
And I think he surprised a lot of people. He really pulled it off. Um, I, I thought he was really good. Um, so I'm more in his court than, than a lot of people are, I guess. I think, I think people gave him a hard time um, before they even saw what he would do with it. There was a lot of prejudging. Okay, next question here. Hi, yeah. Um, Hi. For, for me and my generation, I suppose, uh, you are the voice of Batman to us. Are um, we different generations or something? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. A smidge. Um, what, what was your thoughts on Bale's Batman voice? I can't dig other actors. I can't dish them. You know what I mean? It sounded weird. What can I say? It sounded like he had laryngitis, but... He does Bruce Wayne. I mean, my God, he nails Bruce Wayne. He's a terrific actor. Did you, did you see American Psycho? I mean, he's a wonderful actor. Um, but his voice was weird as Batman. Okay, next question from a young lad here. Um, uh, how many days did it take you to do Batman the Animated Series? That's a good question. And that gets into the difference between doing the series and doing the games. I don't know how many of you are aware of that. When you do a series or a, a direct-to-video movie, you're in a booth, a big room, together with the whole cast, six or eight actors. They bring you all together and you do basically a radio play. You're, you're, you're doing the reading of the script as an ensemble. So it's kind of like doing community theater. It's wonderful. There's a lot of interaction. There's a lot of kibitzing and kidding around. And, and you get ideas from the other actors. You get energy. Mark and I feed each other. I, I, I know he makes me a better Batman. And I think I make him a better Joker because we love watching each other work. We really love watching each other work. And a lot of the actors on the shows are like that. So when you go into a recording, it takes two hours to do a script, and it goes like lightning. It goes so fast, you turn around and you're done. You think, wow, where did the time go? Because it's all been interactive time. You know, it goes so fast. But when you do a game, you're alone in a booth because of the way games are structured they need completely clean takes of each line because the way the game is played you know it, the the algorithms of how it's structured it all has to be completely isolated so you have to be alone and you have to keep the character alive in your head you've got to keep the situation alive in your head and you've got to give them line after 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 line, after line, for four hours at a time. And then they give you an hour for lunch and then they bring you in for four hours more. And that's a day's work when you're working on a game. And then, they, you know, like, you know, Kevin, that was great. Now, can you give it to us with a little irony? Okay, great, the irony was great. Now give us a little smile. Keep the irony and the smile, but we just want a grrr in there too, you know. And you're, by the end of the day, you don't know how to speak English. You're kind of like, you know, it's, it's, it's so, and, and in the midst of it all, you're trying to keep the Batman character alive and stay in his voice. But you have no one else feeding you. You're in a total vacuum. So creating the games is no fun. It's like actor hell, you know? But doing the shows is like actor summer camp. You know, that's just so much fun. Um, but then when you go to, to, when you see the game, and you play the game, and you think, wow, look what I'm a part of. Look what I contributed to. I'm so proud of what I did. I knew it would be great, you know? I always knew I was good. Even though during the process, you wanted to pull out your teeth, you know? So, so it's a good question. It gets to the difference between the games and the shows. Okay, next question here. <clears throat> Mr. Kevin Conroy. Hey. 
Uh, thank you for portraying one of the most formative cartoon characters of our time. And that I think that when great actors are paired with great stories, that characters can become as lifelike as possible that we can identify with. And I want to thank you very much for that. Uh, my question is, as the definitive Batman of my generation, at least, which is, I'm kind of old, uh, what wisdom would you impart to the next generation of young Batman fans? <laughs> well, no. Uh, every, every actor, you always have to have a hook into a character. You have to get like the sort of psychological hook that gets you into the, the role, right? If, if you find that, you're gold. It's, you connect with the character. And for me, the secret I found really early on was that Batman is not the disguise. Bruce Wayne is the disguise. Batman is what he became because of what happened to his parents as a child. Batman is like his naked, damaged soul, ripped open. And what it looks like is that black suit with those pointy ears and that cape. It's, it's a frightening image because that's what the pain inside of him is. So when he gets down into that sound, it doesn't sound like a forced sound because it's where his soul really lives. You know what I mean? So it sounds comfortable because, you know, that, that's, that's where he is. And then, like all of us, when he faces the world, he puts on his suit to go to the office and his suit is Bruce Wayne. That's the performance. And he becomes the, the playboy the womanizer, the, the, the captain of empire in Gotham, the, you know? So that was my hook into the role. So that would be my advice to anyone young playing the role is think of Bruce Wayne as the performance and think of Batman as where your soul is really comfortably residing. Okay, we're just to your left here. Hello, I just want to thank you so much for coming on today. And sure. my question slash request is from the Batman animated series, what was your favorite line? And could you do it in Batman's voice for us? Please say no, it'll be funny. <laughs> I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. Did anyone else get tingles there? I know I did, right. Question, yeah. That was your question, someone stole your question. You, right, I'll just squeeze through here. Hello, Kevin. Hi. Uh, with a track record talk, <clears throat> with a track record of having doing the animated series, and also having an appearance with the Batman Arkham games, what made the Arkham games very distinct from the animated series, mostly? Well, I think, I think the artwork, I think the Arkham artwork is, <laughs> is distinct from the animated series. Um, it's beautiful, but it's different. So it's a different world. Um, and it's, as hard as it is to believe, it's a darker world because it's, it's the world inside Arkham Asylum. That was the first concept. And it was a genius concept. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, a uh, question from Batman here. Could you see me there? Hi, Kevin. How are you hey. doing? Uh, Batman's one of the most characters, got the most suits. And I wondered if you had any favorites, and if you had to dress up in any suit, which one you'd choose from the Batmans that are around at the moment? What was the question? If you could choose any Batman suit to wear, what would it be? Batman? What do you mean? He, he only has one suit, right? The Batman suit. <laughs> oh, which version of the yeah, Batman yeah. suit? Oh, okay. Well, I have to say the Arkham game version is pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. It is amazing. That's what you're wearing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, 
There's a company called Sideshow Collectibles. Have you ever heard of them? Oh, God, they have some unbelievable stuff. And uh, I got one of their Arkham Batman just recently. It's very cool. I think, if you're up for this, do you think we should get a photo of Kevin with the Arkham Batman? Because how often are you going to see them together? If that's all right with you, Kevin. Sure. Yeah, do you want to head up to the front? We'll get a photo as he was Batman with Kevin. So get your phones out, ladies and gentlemen. This is an awesome opportunity. Was anyone else a little bit disappointed he didn't do a gruff Batman voice when he asked the question? <laughs> Big round of applause for Batman there. Right, we have another question here from Spider-Man. Oh, hi, Kevin. I'm a big fan of yours. Um, would hi. you be part of um, Batman um, Go Insane animated movie with Mark Hamill? Would I? Be part, be part of um, Batman um, Go Insane animated oh, movie. Oh, look, if they asked me to do that, I would do it in a heartbeat. Like I would do Hush or Death in the Family. I mean, there are all these wonderful scripts that I would love to do. Um, I just don't know if they'll ask me. Each director likes to put their own stamp on something. So that's why occasionally I don't get asked to do something. That's why I don't even hear about it until after it's in production. Okay, uh, final question here. Hi, Kevin. Um, Hi. Yours was perhaps considered one of the most sympathetic Batmans of all time. Um, how do you feel about the evolution of Batman and the different versions that have existed since your version? Mine was the more sympathetic, you say? That's very nice of you to say, because I think that was the way I approached it. I really approached him as, as a man with a huge heart that has been damaged, and that he spends his life trying to heal that. And the way he's doing it is by helping people. So his, his total force is for good. Um, so it's nice of you to say that, that that, my, that, that that performance communicated to you. I think in some later incarnations, it's gotten darker. Um, and I think that's just a theat theatrical kind of device that some directors use to just have a different take on something. You know, people want to get their own stamp on something. And so things will get darker, like... Uh, Oh, what? Like the, the, the show Gotham that's on TV. It's a beautiful show. The artwork's incredible. The, the performances are incredible. But my God, it's so violent. Um, the Batman I did would never be a part of that world. It's so violent. Um, so that's just, I think, different directors trying to, to find ways to give their own take on something. Cool. I think we've got time for one last question, so I'll run across. Yep. Sorry. Thank you. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Uh, hi. Um, basically, um, how long did it take, and have you got any techniques or anything, to perfect the voice of Batman? I'm telling you, I was a... I went to Juilliard, you know what I mean? I was a stage actor. I had never done a voice before. I had a commercial agent. I was in LA, I was based out of New York. I was in LA doing a sitcom, and my agent said, oh, they're putting together a new show over at Warner Brothers Batman, why don't you give it a shot? I said, new show? I said, that's been around forever. He said, no, there's never been an animated show of Batman. I didn't even know there had never been an animated show of Batman. I didn't know who Bruce Tim was, or Andrea Romano was. When I went into audition, I didn't know I was meeting the royalty of animation. So I had no apprehensions. I had no, I wasn't nervous. I was totally free because I didn't know who any of these people were. And my only exposure to Batman had been the Adam West show. And I told them that. And Bruce Tim goes, no, 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 that's not what we're doing. We love Adam West, but that's not what we're doing. And he said, you know, this is very noir, it's very dark, it's very gritty. It's, his parents were murdered as, uh, when he was a child. He's, he's avenging their deaths. He, he lives this double personality, this, this tortured guy in caves. I said, 
this is like the Hamlet story, because I was putting it in references to my training. So I improvised the voice that minute in front of them, just in my imagination. I just put myself into the darkest, most painful place I could find, and I came up with this sound. And they hired me right there, and they'd seen over 500 people. But I think the only reason I got it was because I was such an idiot. I didn't know anything about it. I, did, I was such an idiot that I had no tension. You know what I mean? You know, you can build up all these apprehensions and tensions, and you go in, and you're like this. Well, I didn't have any of that, because I was just totally improvising. So I came up with a voice that moment. There's a saying in the theater, dare to fail. Daring to fail means you'll only be great if you risk looking like a jackass. You have to risk everything, and sometimes you will look like a jackass. Sometimes you will fall on your ass. But if you risk, that's when you find moments of brilliance. And so you dare to fail. If you're always playing it safe and always coloring within the lines, you'll never find moments of greatness because it, those are only found in moments of inspiration when you break the lines, when you break the mold. And so the phrase that actors use is dare to fail. That's what it means. I was daring to fail in that situation because I'm an idiot. I didn't know any better. I had no apprehensions or tensions because I was like this big, I was like Superman. I was like this big idiot, you know? <laughs> now, before you go, Kevin, I thought we could play a little game with the audience, if you're oh, for I, that. You look like someone who was into games. I, I thought I'd, so. I am. I've got all the Batman games, don't worry. There you go. I love them games, not going to lie. It's not one of those the horse says, oh, yeah, I love them. My Steam account is all the Batman games. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to play a guessing game with you guys. My friend L can also do the Batman animated voice. And what we're going to do is you're going to close your eyes, and you've got to try and guess if it's Kevin or the con Roy. Dad jokes always win. Are you up for that game? Yeah, are you guys up for that game? Yeah, if Elf, you want to pop up here? So, in a second, you're all going to close your eyes. I'm going to trust you aren't going to cheat. Some of you look a bit dodgy. And um, is the mic on there for you? Yep, do you want to say hi? Two seconds. Yeah. We've got the mic there going. Try one more time. It says it's open. Oh, there we go. Hello. Right, so, ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Think of an ocean. No looking, no cheating. Now, I'm going to ask one of the gentlemen here to do their best Batman impression, and then I'm going to ask the second one to do their best Batman impression. And then you've got to work out which one you think was the con. Okay, are you ready? Everyone looking? Okay, no looking. I want you to remember, Clark, in all your private moments, in all your years to come, I want you to remember my hand at your throat. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. And number two. I want you to remember, Clark, in all your years to come, in all your dark moments, my hands around your throat. Who thinks the con was number one? <laughs> I think you've all got that one. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we need- My um, job is safe. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen- For the moment. The one and only Kevin Conroy! Thank you.